Okay, today is March the 14th, 2019, and right now at 10.45 p.m. we have a temperature of 47 degrees here in the foothills of Los Angeles. The relative humidity has risen to 31%. We were down at 15% right around 7 p.m. Uh, the dew point is way down at 18 degrees, and the barometer is sitting at 30 inches. It's been that way all day, 30 inches all day long. All right, so first thing we notice here is we've got a uh, storm system moving to the uh, east-northeast, and uh, this has a right-angle imprint uh, being caused by a satellite transmitter. We notice in tonight's example that the uh, power on this system, rather the power by the transmitter, is such that it's still allowing a lot of moisture to wrap back around into that vortex. Normally, uh, when we see... Uh, this activity, this type of manipulation, uh, the the moisture from the frontal system is not allowed to wrap back into that vortex. So they're allowing this thing to move along and uh, maintain a fairly strong uh, storm conditions. If you look at the uh, the ocean uh, uh, the uh, surface analysis map here, this is the Pacific uh, East Pacific map here, and then the Central Pacific and the West Pacific. This is the this is the uh, system right here we're looking at 976 millibar. This is moving to the uh, uh, east northeast direction. This is a storm. Now somebody was asking here the other day on the one of the uh, one of the posts on the video here going back a couple of couple of videos. A storm uh, generates winds between 55 and 72 miles per hour, and then a gale. Is a little bit weaker than a storm. That that uh, the wind on a gale is identified as 39 to 54 miles per hour. And everything over uh, a storm force uh, winds, which is over 72 miles per hour, we've got a hurricane force winds. So uh, that's the uh, Beaufort scale. By the way, I'm reciting. So a gale again is 39 to 54 miles per hour. A storm is 55 to 72 mile per hour winds. And then over that, we have hurricane force winds. All right, so we've got the storm right behind this one here. This is 982 millibar. This is going to move right towards the west coast. So we've got high pressure depicted here. We've got a trough and a low indicated right over uh, northern California right there. All right, so we do have a rain forecast for next Wednesday and Thursday and Friday on some of the phones. Where that's going to come from, we don't know. It, it this, that's you know that's a long way off. Uh, the this system here is going to be steered. We've got high pressure filling in right here. Uh, this will be allowed to move in, and that will uh, jets are already up spring. We saw that as I mentioned in the afternoon, or maybe I didn't mention it. This is about take four on this video. Uh, we do have a no rain forecast, and we have uh, moisture moving in. So what does that mean? We've got uh, the jets are going to be up spraying, and that will ensure that there is no lift in the atmosphere, and this will not produce precipitation. So we do see some of these small pockets of moisture moving in to the uh, Southern California area. We saw those uh, jets spraying this afternoon. Uh, there was a heavy tide of uh, aerosol chemtrails visible on the uh, on the western and southwestern horizons. So we see that satellite transmitter right up here uh, leaving its uh, imprint. You see the uh, moisture wrapping into that vortex. That is a giant system. These Each edge here is you know, hundreds of miles long. We've got a developing system right down here as well, right, right there. So we've got a Santa Ana wind forecast as well um, here in the next few days. That may come from this uh, blockade. We'll have to keep an eye on things. In the meantime, let's take a look at the jet stream map. We have a tropical flow pattern, which is following that uh, storm system up over the Great Lakes and into Canada. This is the system that uh, spooled up. I was uh, showing that 982 millibar. Let's just show that again. I don't remember where we left off, but... This is the storm that came over Los Angeles about three, four days ago. It's now 989 millibars. So this was allowed to strengthen, and it dumped quite a bit of snow over the uh, Colorado area and uh, in that uh, general region. 
Uh, so the storm was allowed to pass over California without dropping much rain. As I mentioned uh, previously, uh, we had three one hundredths of an inch from that weather system, which passed over California here just a few days ago. You see that right here in this progression. This is the SSEC water vapor map. We can see the system moving out over the Great Lakes and into Canada. Out here over California, this uh, weather system was completely blockaded. The vortex was completely blockaded, and that's how they maintained that much weaker, I think it was 1,005 millibar uh, central pressure on that vortex. Now it's at 989. So when the uh, satellite takes power off of the vortex, we have lift in the atmosphere, and this system rebuilds. And this is exactly what happens when, when they kill hurricanes out in the uh, middle of the ocean. When you superheat the center of the hurricane, that disrupts the lift, the convective process, <clears throat> and the uh, pressure uh, rises. So you, one way to kill a hurricane is you just stop the lift and uh, destroy the convective process. That's how it's done. So we won't see this on the news tonight. We'll see the cartoon animated weather. Uh, there's a reason why we don't see the satellite maps. That's because uh, people would figure out that carbon dioxide has nothing to do with this sort of covert manipulation going on. So we have fake news who's involved in uh, the uh, this uh, Russian collusion delusion. They're trying to frame uh, Donald Trump, our president. And uh, we're going to get political on this channel because politics has everything to do with everything. And uh, the people that were involved in trying to frame President Trump, they're going to have their day real soon. That's going to be a fun, fun to watch. Carbon dioxide has nothing to do with this right here, and that's why these maps are not being shown on the uh, fake news television because people would figure out that the narrative, the CO2 narrative, is fake. It's phony, and it was uh, designed to usher in a carbon tax. The Europeans are are suckers. They've been they've been duped, and uh, that's about all I can say. All right, so we've got two storms back to back, and no rain in the forecast until next week. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've seen just about everything. Uh, just a short update. Wanted to feature this. Uh, right angle here on this uh, weather system. Last thing before we sign it off is that i uh, got a couple of pictures of uh, Ocasio-Cortez right here. Let's take a look at those. Uh, this 29-year-old was a bartender about a year ago in Manhattan. Now she's a congresswoman pontificating on climate change, and she wants to uh, get rid of uh, cars and planes, and people shouldn't be eating hamburgers, and we need to do something about the cows flatulating because that's uh, causing climate change, she, she's uh, telling everybody. And the uh, TV, fake news TV, is giving her all the time that she wants to make her uh, ridiculous points. Here she is mixing drinks at the Flats 6 right up here. This is in Manhattan. So barely uh, 13 months ago, 29-year-old Ocasio-Cortez was a bartender. And uh, the fake news media is not telling anybody that. There she is. This picture was taken uh, November 14th, 2017. She was 28 then, working as a bartender. I want the mainstream fake news tell us that. Probably because a lot more people would, uh, wouldn't believe her, her, uh, her baloney or BS. Anyway, this is, this is out of hand. We've got children running the show. And they're getting too much attention. All right. So we'll just leave it here uh, and get another update real soon. Okay, that's it.